In this video, we're going to talk about graduate entry medicine. One of the main questions that I get from graduate students is how does the application process differ or what's different about when I'm applying to medical school as a graduate rather than an undergraduate? So in this video, I'm going to share with you four ways in which the graduate medicine application varies from that of the normal undergraduate path. It's understandable that graduates are a little bit more anxious when it comes to applying to medicine. The competition rate is higher and also you're a lot more on your own. When people are applying from A levels, they usually have the backing of a careers advisor at school in their sixth form, or at least the school will have some familiarity with putting students through or at least know the UCAS process so that they can kind of give a bit of guidance towards how it's going to go and sort the sort. Because as a graduate, you tend to be a lot more on your own. Usually when you've got people who are applying to undergrad medicine out of sixth form, they've usually got the backing of at least a careers advisor or people in their sixth form that are going to help them, or at, at least they're used to having people apply to university or maybe even some people who have applied to medicine. That way they're a lot more well versed in the things that you need to do, the little tweaks here and there, and basically have a much better understanding of the steps and the process that you have to go through to get there. And that's why the grads on my mentoring program tend to do quite well because they now have the advice that they would have had from a careers advisor or someone who's guiding them along the way. And that way they can kind of pick up on all the little things that they didn't know about and ways that it differs slightly for applicants when they're going through the grad program. So what is is different about the graduate application to medicine? Well, the thing to know is that the process is exactly the same. So the key steps that I highlight in that free webinar that I give on the four key steps to a successful medical school application are all exactly the same, but it's along the way how each one of those differs. So you go through the normal preparation, you see your aptitude test. Some universities, instead of the UCAT for graduate entry medicine, require a different exam called the GAMSAT, which we can talk about in a different video. Then you have to submit your personal statement, apply to UCAS, and then do the interviews. But it's along those steps that things are slightly different and they tweak the way that they kind of interview you and ask the kind of questions that they ask you along that route. So what are the four key things that they want to see that's slightly different in a graduate applicant versus a undergraduate one? The first is independence and balance. They want to see that as a mature student, you've developed the independence to be able to cope with the increased pressures of life as well as the full time degree by yourself without any support and you have the maturity to handle both and the pressures that come with it. More often than not, when people apply as a graduate student, they have a slightly trickier financial situation. They usually have to earn money on the side and often don't have the same loan allowances that you would have as an undergrad. Therefore, that means that you have to be a lot more organized and they want to see evidence of that backed by some real life examples that demonstrate that you can handle the increased pressure. The second thing that they want to see is more achievement. So when you submit your personal statement and you're talking about things at interview, you've lived a lot more life than the average 17 year old who's applying to medicine. So they want to see that. They want to see some evidence of achievement. They want to see things that you've done that stand out more than the average 18, 17 year old who's applying. Now, again, in that webinar, I talk about lots of different ways that you can stand out with regard to your extracurricular activities. But for graduates, they do have a nice opportunity, usually while they're at university with some of the connections that they've made. So things that will particularly help you stand out are getting articles published or being involved in research. You can even have a look at magazines and places where you can submit some articles of your own. The Student BNJ, for example, has opportunities for people to submit articles. And although it does preference people who are currently in medical school, it does give opportunities for people who are trying to apply and kind of want to get something stand out for their CV. But if not, there are always plenty of things that you can Google to submit articles to that will publish them. And that will look really, really good when you have something to talk about on your personal statement and at interview. But that's not just limited to academic extracurricular activities. There are lots of things that you can do that can be very impressive in terms of maybe organizing charity events or doing anything that's stand out and impressive and going to catch the eye of someone who's reading your personal statement or is going to impress somebody at interview when you speak to them. The third element is that they are going to push you a lot harder at interview. So when you have a debate about something and they want to press you on some issues, normally for the undergrads who are a bit younger, they don't really want to overwhelm them and intimidate them and, and leave them traumatized from going through the interview process. But they understand that once you've gone through a degree and you're a bit older and a bit more mature, you can have a much more hard debate with them and they won't be as scared to kind of push you and really press you on certain issues. That means that the debates are going to be more academic. They want stronger arguments and they want you to probably come up with
with some evidence that you can think of off the top of your head that's going to back up some of the statements that you're making. Essentially, they're going to be more in-depth and they're going to press you harder for your answers. And the final and probably most important point is they want to know in your personal statement and interview why it is you now decided that you want to change to a career in medicine. And if they're feeling mean, they'll sometimes even quiz you as to what makes you sure that you're not going to change back or change your mind to a different career again because they're going to kind of play on that card that you're supposedly undecisive and have changed career path, which actually when we realize that's completely normal and very understandable for somebody who's in their early 20s or any age of their life really, it's absolutely acceptable to have a change of heart about your career. When you're applying to medicine, they don't want to hear that. They want to know that you're now committed to a lifetime of medicine and you're going to pursue this career for the rest of your life. So if you'd like some more information about how you can make your personal statement stand out and what sort of extracurricular activities you should be doing to really make that application pop, you can check out on my homepage a webinar where I go into depth about the four key steps that you need for a successful medical school application. And if you want to check it out, I have a mentoring service where we've had incredible success with getting grads into medical school. You have to apply so you can fill out an application form in the link below in the description. And other than that, if you want to check out more videos about graduate medicine, you can check out this video here and I'll explain a little bit more about the process. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that video.